Welcome back to the MILF Code. I'm Felicia Michaels along with my lovely, sassy co host, <laughs> Susanna Brisk, and her uh, baby daddy, Barry Katz, <laughs> one of the best managers in the business, and also Jessica Michelle Singleton, very funny uh, comedian. You know, how I met. We're watching T Radio V, radio in TV. He's absolutely Jason. He's absolutely gay. He'll absolutely brighten up the darkest rainy day. He's funny and loves movies. He's smart and he's a Jew. He's an actor and. Hey everybody, welcome to Absolute Jason Stewart. I'm here with my guest and my friend, mm -hmm. Dee Wallace. Thank you for being here. Oh, I'm so I've been glad wanting to, be to get here. you on for so long. When I did my other show, you came on. We didn't even know each other. I forgot how you came to me. And I remember you came from an audition and you were uh, harried. And I was thinking to myself, this woman has to audition? You know? I, uh huh. I, uh huh. Which is <laughs> shocking because everybody knows you, the mom in ET. And uh, to me, you're a, a, a legend. You know, certainly in the mother department, and certainly in one of the most iconic films that's ever been done. And what an incredibly wonderful performance and a mother that everybody Thank wanted you. to be a part of. Thank you. It's definitely my Wizard of Oz. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. It's a beautiful film. It's still changing people's lives. You know, I go to do a personal appearance, and I'll have a four year old and a 90 year old come up to my table. It still like, feels good. Oh, it feels wonderful. I have so many life-changing stories uh, a, a, w a mother came up to my table and said you know she was teary-eyed she said do you you're a part of a miracle in my life uh, my son is autistic and I had never heard him speak a word and I took him to the re-release of ET and on the way home he started saying every line that ET said <sighs> can you imagine she said I I pulled over to the side of the road and I I thought, this is a miracle. I, uh, she said, I didn't know what to do but just sit there and watch my son in this beautiful moment and try to remember the first time I heard him speak. Wow. Yeah, to know you were a part of a film Because you were a young woman. I mean, you, when you got that part, you were just trying to start a career. You yep. probably had no idea. You know, this guy, I, what did he have done? Close Encounters, I guess, before, right? Yes, and... And Jaws, uh, Jaws yeah. yeah. So he was sort of known as an actiony. You know, this film was sort of uh, veering towards where you know the beginning of his more Raiders. Raiders came out after I got right. the part, but before ET came out. And um, so yeah, it was well Steven Spielberg up and coming. You know, he was the hot new thing, but he wasn't Steven Spielberg yet. Right. He wasn't you the Oscar-winning Schindler's List, right. you know, director. He was sort of but this I, new guy that hung around Universal Studios, and yeah. and I heard all the stories. You know, but all you had to do was read the script, and, uh, I, and I had to go, I had to go over to the studio behind closed doors, locked closed doors, to read the script, and I called my agent and I said, "Look, I don't know if this is going to do anything for me." Duh. But I know it's going to do something for the world, and I want to be a part of this film. This because all your stuff before was more sexy kind of roles, right? I mean, really? I always think of uh, Ten and some of the oh, other films. Oh, you thought Ten was sexy? I, I, I know you <laughs> don't, because I know you didn't think that. But it, I mean, uh, all those films were. I think that you were sort of this sexy you. young thing. I love you. But it's it, but Come it's on true. With me, little boy. You were a, you were <laughs> yeah, but nothing's going to happen. Uh, you were a knockout. Not that, and you still are, of course. I mean, look at you. But I I'm know, just saying, but you were this beautiful. I mean, and you you appeared on almost every, you know, episodic of the day, and then went into your whole, uh, what we were talking about, scream queen kind of thing. But you were doing yeah. really, really high end 
uh, horror and thrillers, Cujo, yeah. and either the dog was chasing you or the oh, th something's always chasing. How you, did babe. that happen though for ET? Because that's such a different turn. Well, I had done the Howling uh, for Dan Blatt, whom was it before or after ET? It was before. Okay. And um, and then he called me and he said, "Dee, I have this starring role in this movie." You're hot. This is a Stephen King. And I went, oh, Stephen King. So it's Stephen King. And I King. read, well, I adore Stephen King, but I, you know. But he wasn't Stephen King, King then. You, well, like we yeah, say, he was, but not in the same way as now. Not, no. Yeah. None of us were who we are now. Yeah. And, but I, I didn't know if I should do another horror thing, but I read the script. And my God, it was a tour de force performance opportunity for an actress, and it gave me everything I love to do. It made a statement about humanity. There was this, you know, huge arc that I love to play. I love to do this whole big thing from A to Z. Um, there were so many colors in Donna going on, and I thought, oh my God, and to work with Dan Blatt again, whom I mm. just adored. And, um, so yeah, I, I just couldn't say no, and I'm glad I didn't. I think of all the films I've done, uh, Cujo's my favorite. Really? As far as looking at it from a performance perspective and thinking I went as far as I could go, as truthfully as I could go there. I do. It's, it's interesting because people think that you know, playing a mom in a movie is easy to do. You just hi, honey, you know, da, da. and I think it's a very difficult part to play. It's a part. Uh, it's difficult to, to play. It's a if, balancing act. If you play it genuinely. Yeah. Um, and and you play it from the heart. Which I think came out. You know, that that's. I mean, honestly, he probably could have had any woman in Hollywood at that point. He was so big. I mean, you know, I mean. He, oh, absolutely. Terry Gar, I'm sure, wanted that part because she had been in the mom in. Uh, Close Encounters, I'm sure. And he doesn't use a lot of the same people over no, again. No, Melinda Dillon was in Close Encounters, right? No, but Terry Gar was too. She pl Oh, that? Melinda Gar played the mother, and Terry Gar played oh, right. uh, Richard Dreyfuss' right, right, wife. Right, right, right. Can you believe I remember this? I Can you believe I don't? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just, I, I was also a big, I love Terry Gar. I mean, whenever I think of her, I think of that scene. Well, I'm glad scene. I beat her out. For yes. Well, I, I don't remember if she Actually, was Actually, he had me come in and read for a film called Used Cars that he did first. Oh, did he direct that? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, that was with uh, Kurt Russell. Yeah. But he, he knew the quality that he wanted for, you know, everybody in E.T. was supposed to be childlike. And here I am. Well, it's, 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 <laughs> it's vulnerability. Yeah, but it's, but it's, it's so funny because to me, you know, in getting to know you over the years and, talking to you and, and, and working with you on, uh, on the thing that you helped me with, you, there's so much more. I think it's the shape of your head. It's, you know, there's a roundness and there's a cheeks and there's a certain uh, uh, idea that we have in our head of a certain kind of person being a certain way. You know what I mean? I, mean, I, I don't know. I am very childlike. I'm very vulnerable and I, I just, I'm very much a little girl still. But in you a are, lot of ways. But there's, this, uh, there's a, there's a there's depth. There's this really tough broad in there, too. Oh, God, yeah. You're really like, tough You're broad. somewhere between Michael Learned and, and Joan Blondell. <laughs> I'll take those two. Listen, and it, you know, I used to have the largest acting studio here in town. Oh, yeah. My students would go, don't get the look from D. If you get the look, you know you're in trouble. You, so, yeah, I'm, I can be pretty tough. Ask my kid. She'll tell you. I because you know you scared me when I first met you. Oh come I, on! I, I, a little, just a little. I because I was like I was like thinking, oh god, I got this. I, I'm so lucky. Cause I just started doing my show. This was the other show I did when it was only a radio show. I thought, God, I got this great gal. I just love her work, and I was a little nervous, and I didn't want you know I wanted you to be happy, and uh, you had come and you were you were rushing and you had to go da, 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 you know, and the whole thing. And I I was thinking, God, I don't want to make her unhappy. But, but a I lot was very present with you. Oh wasn't my God! I? The okay. minute that you were completely yeah, just for a second. You know, but as you, we were saying before, I read energy so strongly. I've been yeah. like this my whole life. It's almost too much sometimes. Yeah, yeah. 
I have to you can make a choice about that, you know. You can say, okay, I... I'm learning to as I yeah. get older. But I used to go into a room on an audition, and I would think that everything going in the room was about me. Of course. And realizing that... You're an actor. Mo yeah. <laughs> Well, you, yeah, and also you're going in for a meeting. You think that that, yeah. you know, what, what, no matter what it Not is. Not so much. It's, n Half yeah. the time they're on their phones or they're waiting for a call. Or, or they're, they're someplace you know, else. Oh and, and now they have to be technicians running the, the, the videotape. Yeah. And it seems like there's this peace between us that there didn't used to be. That, you know, this, this, this camera, which helps them and everything. But it seems to me that I, I feel like we're missing a little stuff. Oh, we got to take a break. Oh we're no. going to take we're going to take a break. We're going to come back. We're going to talk about the bear. Yay. Which I know nothing about. And I purposely didn't because I want to hear it for the first time. We'll be back in just a second with my friend D Wallace here on Absolutely Jason Stewart. Don't change that channel. Oh my god, we don't have a channel. <laughs> don't You are watching T Radio V. Radio in TV. Wake up, we've got big news. I'm not gonna mumble this time. Geekscape, the long running movie video game. Let me do one more. Hey, geeks, we got big news. Geekscape, your favorite show about movies, video games, comics, and TV, is coming to T Radio V Monday, October 6th. And it'll be on every Monday from then on, 7 p.m. Until the apocalypse happens, we're all eaten by zombies. Hey, my fellow thoughters out there, I'm Charles Shaughnessy. Check out my new show, Here's a Thought, with Charles Shaughnessy, August the 7th, 3 p.m. PST, right here on T-Radio V. Now, you know I have a lot to say, but I want to hear what you have to say. So tune in, grab your phones, call me, tweet me, email me in the studio, and let's get this conversation going. Here's a Thought, starting August the 7th, 3 p.m. PST, right here on T-Radio V. That's radio in TV. I'm Laura Somoza. I'm Sterling Gardner. And we are Between the Sheets every Monday here, 3 p.m., tradiov.com. T Radio V. That's right, it's T Radio V, radio in TV. What is that face? <laughs> he wants to see our hands. That's radio. N. T. V. Wah, 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 wah. We're not a couple. <laughs> you are watching T Radio V. Radio in TV. Superstar of stage and screen. Over 200 credits to her name. You don't know what clip it is? It's the one that Jonas has worked with Hollywood's biggest names. Oh. Including Steven Spielberg, Peter Jackson, Wes Craven, and Stephen King. World renowned speaker, author, and healer. It's about the celebration of a movie that's changed lives and touched lives and is still touching lives. I had a little girl come up to me a couple of weeks ago and oh, Mama E.T. Has worked with some of the most celebrated speakers, Bob Proctor, Joe Vitale, Candy G, and Mary Morrissey. Thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate it. Nice to be here. Tell us about your journey. I came in as this very bright light, which my daddy called me his little mm -hmm. bright light, mm -hmm. which we all do. We all start out as light. <laughs> Who 
ladies and gentlemen, the legendary D. Wallace. Show us a little bit of some of the stuff that you've done, some of the things. Uh, so you just did Supernova. No, Supernatural. Supernatural, oh, yeah. Supernova something else. And you just did Supernatural, and you said that your Twitter completely blew up and it put you into a whole new stratosphere of people. Oh, my gosh. The fans that they have for that show, and rightly so, I must say. Those boys, you know they're going into their 11th season. It's a really popular show. Huge show, and those boys are just the dearest, sweetest. And they wanted you, I'm assuming, just because of your connection to this whole spiritual world. Well, I, I think. think they wanted me because I have a huge horror fan base. Yeah, you know, but also the spiritual and element. Right. I, I think it's a combination. It's, it's a really interesting, it's the dichotomy of D. <laughs> what did you play? Um, I played a very sexy senior citizen who comes on to one of the boys and gets wrapped up in, in this whole banshee story that goes on. So I, I get to actually say a lot of my healing things like, uh, you know, the secret of being happy in life, follow your heart. Uh, uh, and, and then I get to scream and be hysterical with the banshee. So I, I get And to you also get to be a woman who someone sought after. Uh, yeah. Which is really sort of cool. Well, and, and he was so cute, Dean. He, he says, you know, Dee, I know this is a pretty far fetch. And I just l looked at him and I went, not really in my life, not so <laughs> much. <laughs> I've dated a few younger guys, so. And you've got a bow now. I do have a bow. And he's, is he younger? No, he's older. Oh, he's older. But he's very, very young at heart. Okay, so then he's got you. Yeah. So that's really cool. And you also just did Just Add Magic, which you played a grandmother on, a character that's actually called Grandma. Yes. It's, it's actually just released on Amazon Prime, so everybody can go in and binge watch it. It's a wonderful show. It's a family show. Mm -hmm. um, thank God, because the first season I'm under this spell, which I come in and out of, fortunately, the damn thing ended <laughs> at the end of, oh. of the season, so... We're waiting to hear if we go back. I th I'm sure we're going to. I think it would be crazy if they didn't pick this show up. It's, well, it's amazing. I mean, five years ago, if somebody said to you, you're going to be doing a show on the Internet, you said, oh, no, I don't think so. Yeah. I'm and sure now you're dying. To, and now you're dying to be on the second season. Well, yeah. it's a nice little show. I get to stay in town, you uh -huh. know, uh, which allows me to do all the healing work, you know, I, because I do private sessions all over the world every day from my home. I have my, you know, my own radio call-in show Sunday mornings at 9 a.m. Where? What's it on? Blog Talk. What's it on? Blog Talk. Oh, it's called Blog Talk. Yeah, it's well, it's called Conscious Creation. So if you go to my website, I am a m i am d wallace dot com. It's on the home. So page. everything is I am. Everything's on. Same thing, JasonStewart dot com. I, I would say keep your name. Yeah. It's like Tina Turner said. The only thing I want is my name. Yeah, you baby, I hear else. that. I have to ask one other thing because I, lo I love this movie, Love and Mercy. Yes. I loved it so much. And I had Joanna Thank Goings you. on the show, was on the show. And it was a much longer film, apparently, she told me. Huge. You it know. was lots longer. I was in it. I, yeah, I would. <laughs> but then I wasn't. She played uh, the mother, the first wife. And uh -huh. she was cut down too, but she, but still, it was such an incredible experience. A great, who was the director? Tell us. Oh, could you guys look it up for me? Oh my gosh! The director, now I'm really it, embarrassed. That's okay because I forget it all the time too. And Go I, ahead, I'll do it while we're tell and me. And I about. loved, I loved working with him. I really I, loved working with him. I did too, and I him. and I loved the movie so much. Um, it was, it was. How did a it lot come about? Fun. They just called for me. They called uh, to see if I would play Elizabeth Banks' mother and. I had so much fun. Oh, my fun. God, yes. I had so much fun with her. You know her. what's so funny is you were almost unrecognizable to me in the energy of the, of the character. It was so different to me. In the I, I'm not in the movie. I don't end up in the movie, but my voice ends up in the movie. Are you? You're sure? Unless yeah, of there's you're an sure. extended version that they Because I saw, I've released. seen different, I've seen the movie twice, and I love it so much. There, and I it's remember. Bit, Paul Dano, is he not incredible? How he didn't get nominated. I can't even oh, believe it. Oh, I don't it. even know this. It's, it's his director, Bill Pollard. Yeah. I think it is. He I, was great I, to I, work I with. Say, but I, Elizabeth kept saying, well, maybe this scene's going to be in here because Dee's in it. <laughs> and I just 
laugh. I swear to God, I thought I saw you in this film, and I felt your presence in it. Maybe well, it was the voice of the mom or something. Yeah, my voice. Because I remember it. I so did the voiceover with her, but. Oh man! Yeah, it was a big disappointment. It was oh, a disappointment, but I get it. Uh, you know, when I did ten. <laughs> the first with showing Dudley Moore with directed Dudley by Moore, uh, Blake Edwards. Blake Edwards, yeah. The first showing um, of the movie was four hours and ten minutes. Jeez. So a lot of me. This is so weird that I thought that I have such a memory of you being in the film and, fe and feeling connected. Well, maybe you saw an extended director. I think I saw a longer version of it at a screening. I'd like to see it if you yeah. find it. <laughs> and I, and when I, but the thing is, when Joanna was in the film, Joanna Goings, a friend of mine. I did not even know it was her that she was so. And what oh, I loved about the casting of this film, oh yeah. What I loved about this film was in, even in the casting there was an originality about it. It wasn't just the usual foe. You know, they really cast interesting people and they let people do things that were different. Yeah. And it was they pulled people from different worlds and I love that. You know, we were talking before you came in about just the idea of where you are, where you think you belong and where you want to be, you know, and I think you're, you're always saying to me, Jason, do you think you belong there? Do you you got to own it. You got to you know go in. And around, I guess it was around two years ago. Was it two or three years? I guess it have been three years ago. I came to your house. Yeah. And you did a session, session, yeah. session with me. And I didn't know, at the time I left, I thought, okay, I wanted to get out. My father had just passed away, and I wanted to get out of the sadness of that and also. And the victimness. Yes, and where I was at this point in my, in my life and at this age. You know, I did, I'd never been this age before, and, and I really didn't see myself getting older. Not that I, you know, that I didn't know that I would. Not that I thought that I would die, but it just... Yes, but experiencing it is a whole yes, different thing. Yes, it's, it's, it's quite shocking yeah, it at is. times. It is. It really is, and also... You have to re-identify who you've known yourself as forever. That's what was sort of happening to yeah. me, because I never really saw myself as an older person. And I think I can see by your face that you also feel the same way. I think uh, at a certain age we all go through that, absolutely. And there's an acceptance. But also it's, it's a real issue, um, especially in this country. We oh, yeah. are hypnotized to be sick. We are programmed to be sick through all the pharmaceutical ads on television. We are programmed to feel older and experience ourselves older when we're only halfway through our life. Oh, yeah. A and it's a big money maker. Uh, you know, I shoot all over the world. Uh, I never go anywhere that have pharmaceutical ads on like we do. We are literally programmed in this country to get well, old Bill Maher has been sick. talking about it for years. You know, he said that the Food and Drug Administration, and it's not just the, it's the food and the drug, they're making us sick. Well, they're making us sick So we can stay alive and then they can your, your, fill us with drugs. Yeah, this is a whole in-depth conversation, but your subconscious will take on anything you allow it to. If you're not consciously saying, BS, I'm not older, I'm aging younger, I have full energy, BS, I'm not going to get that when I turn 70, and I'm not going to die of the pills and all that. You know, you've got to consciously oh, God, live yeah. your life and direct your own energy so that your subconscious doesn't go, okay, I'll take that all as a... But you're fighting it in this country, where other people in other countries are not fighting it. Right. Because they're not, they're not buying into that. With that, we're going to take a break. We're going to come back, and we're going to talk about the bear this time, I swear to God. Okay. We'll be back in just a second here with Dee Wallace and absolutely Jason Stewart. Please stay with us. <coughs> You are watching T Radio V, radio in TV. Hi, I'm Ty Simpkins. Miss Danielle Basuti. Hi, this is Brooke Peoples. I'm Jocelyn Donahue. Hi, I'm Keegan Allen, and you're watching T Radio V. T Radio V. T Radio V, radio in TV. Is that right? Yeah. Yes. T Radio V. Yo. <laughs> T Radio V. Radio in TV. Radio in TV. 
Hi, I'm Bob Nelbandian, and be sure to watch my show, Inside Metal, which airs live every Tuesday from 3 to 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time right here on T-Radio V. I'm going to be bringing in the greatest heavy metal artist live right here in the studio. Once again, every week at 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time every Tuesday right here at T-RadioV.com, Radio in TV. Hi, I'm Plastic Martyr, and I've got a new show called Just Like You on T-Radio V. It's an inside look into my Hollywood life where I give you a sneak peek into a world of beauty, fashion, and fame. Illusions will be shattered. And of course, there's a little sex hugs and rock and roll. Be sure to check it out Wednesdays at 11, only on T-Radio V. Hi kids, Billy Francesca here for my brand new show at T-Radio V, Advice from an Idiot, every Thursday from 7 to 8 p.m. Pacific time. So please call in and get some advice from someone who knows absolutely nothing about everything. You are watching T-Radio V, radio in TV. Hey, welcome back to Absolutely Jason Stewart with my guest, Dee Wallace. And we're talking about when your assistant said there's this thing with a bear. I thought, I'm not going to read anything about it. I'm going to be surprised. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to, what is this bear about? There's a heart on the bear. Yeah, well, it's, it's my heart project for sure. But, you know, back to our last segment, uh, I've, I've become passionately involved with studying the brain. You know, I do thousands and thousands. I've been an intuitive life coach for 25 years, right? From and being a very successful acting <coughs> coach, and just to throw in a quick plug, on the 20th, you're going to be doing a master class that I wish I could I do, am. but I, I, I'm somewhere else. February 20th. Uh, yeah. You can get a hold of me through the website if anybody's interested. If there's still, there's there's still some room? There's few uh, spots left, yes, and we're allowing auditors to come in. So if you're a director or an editor, anybody that wants to s understand actors mm -hmm. or a beginning actor because we only are taking you know more advanced people. I love that. So, But anyway, so... I started looking at all of these people that I had helped as a teacher, as a life coach, and what I, I could feel that there was one basic common thread that ran through the challenges of everybody, and it was they didn't love themselves. They didn't love who they are. You and I worked on that when you yeah. came in. That we are never, ever taught, let alone encouraged, to love who we are, to say, yes, I am magnificent. I am amazing. Well, as an FYI to that, to, to share with this, just to say, you know, for me, the reason that came up, being a kid who was Jewish and with a father that was in the Holocaust, and you're taught not to pat yourself too much on the back, yeah. you know, keep everything close, don't, you know, some don't trust. Don't trust anybody, and with good reason. You know, the, there was it didn't come from an unreal place. Yes. But it but it it suited them then. But you see, we have to reprogram all that. Now. Exactly. But it didn't. We have it, got it to didn't suit them then. That. But it, it it suited them then when my father was running from the Nazis. But when you come to America, it didn't suit him. Well, it doesn't suit any of us anymore. No. I don't think. No, I don't think so either. And our brains, to make this really quick, our brains are done by the time we're four to seven years old. They're done. They say it's 25, though, no, no? No, Your brain is pretty much in place. How you see yourself and how you see yourself in the world and how you see the world seeing you is even in place by 18 months before you have any language. I remember you to telling me To be able this. to describe it or explain it. So here we are in therapy, sitting in our therapist's office going, you know, I don't, I don't know how to explain it. Well, that's why. Because you had no language when it happened to you. So I created Bupalopaloo, <laughs> is the bear's name, Bupa for short. If you want to check it out, go to Bupa Bear, B-U-P-P-A, bear.com. Or I am D. Wallace. Or I am D. Wallace. But um, it's for all, all the children. It's perfect for Valentine's Day, by the way. And it has 14 empowering statements. I love you. I love you. I 
So the whole idea, I let me, let me so get this. Powerful. So the whole idea of this is to give this to a child. Or the and, child within you. Or the child within you. But really, yeah. I mean, I just saw such a great power is to give this a child at a very early age and let him hear this or her and hear this. And repeat the statements back. Exactly. So one of them wow. is, I love my body. And the ch person child looks at the bear and goes, I love my body. So it's bringing together the things that create strong brain synapses. And in their first words. Exactly. Oh, first person is wow. a must. First person affirmations, if you will, statements a bonding object, an experience of love, and repetition. Mm -hmm. And all of those things create... Repetition. Mm -hmm. mm. And I have, if you read anything about epigenetics and Bruce Lipton, one of our great scientists of today, um, there's study after study after study after study. He actually says in his book, if you want your cells to be healthy, and create your body and your mind and your brain the way you want, in the strongest way, one of the most important things you can do is to love yourself. The, I have a psychologist on the site that says it, to parents, if there's one thing you can do for your child that's going to affect how their bodies are, their, their concepts of who they are, their grades, the relationships they make, if there's one thing you can do, Teach them to love who they are. And that's so let me ask why you a question. I created so, this little So guy. in the kids that I mentor, I'll ask you this on the air. I mentor some kids in their 20s, so I get them after the parents already ruined them. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And a lot of them have this same, this is an issue that's totally. Oh, with it, all of us. Yeah. You know, and I, and I, and I, ha and I have these kids, and I want to say to them, you know, because I think I know better because I'm older and I want to say, you need to do this to this, da, 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 da. and then they see that as me saying, hey, you're wrong. Even when I coach actors, I, I never say to them, don't do this. I say, add on this, add on this, try on this coat. Don't stop doing something, add something. You know, I'll give I, you a really simple exercise cool. to give them. Y can I stand up? Will yeah. the camera? Uh, let's see. No, you can't. Okay. Well, I'll do it in my chair. Okay. But, you'll, you'll but your up. legs are doing this, and your arms are doing this, and you're going, I'm so happy I love me. I'm so happy I love who I am. I'm so... And what that does is it creates a whole uh, energetic shift in your body that says to your brain, what I'm saying makes me really happy. So it it bridges the ability to be happy about loving yourself because your little child in you is going, no, don't, no, don't do that. It's not nice. It's self-centered. You're stuck up. You know, God won't like you. Mommy won't like you. And the kids aren't going to like you because they'll think you're just, you know. Br I'm telling you, if we could all look in the mirror, Jason, every morning and go, I love you. You're amazing. Nobody's going to want to go join ISIS. <laughs> right. It's just no. not. Because we're going to know who we are, and we're not going to need well, to do destructive things. Well, it's about being disenfranchised. Things. I mean, I, y you yeah. know I did this movie, Birth of a Nation. Yes. And, and it was such a big hit at Sundance. And I Congratulations, just, I, oh, thank man. you. And I think you were a part of that, a small part thank of that. Thank you. You know, th everything that I did to work on myself, and I say to people that are listening, it's not just you know, one thing sometimes. You've got to hear it from different people in different ways. And, and it's a journey, honey. Yes, it Life's is. a journey. It's not just sometimes you've got to hear it. And something you said before gets stuck in your brain. And when that thing happens, and I wrote a piece called Showing Up and Full of Gratitude. Oh, beautiful. And it's about, beautiful about that. Well, thank you. And, I, I, and it's so funny because when I sent it to you for a second time, you said, I've already read that. And but I responded to you how yes. beautiful it was. I, yes, you did. And I remembered it when you said it. But, but there's a part of me that thinks, oh, nobody's really reading what I'm doing. Okay, really. stop. Exactly. You see, that's why I created I the, the I bear. Mean, I mean the bear. Because you have to reprogram oh, that automatic. Well, it's an automatic cellular default. What I call it is, to. I call it first thought. In the air, out. And, you, know, and that, you remember when you used to see that? That you don't even know you think. Oh, no. And you think it. But Thousands I of times a day. But I try to be conscious and know it's a first thought and push it out of my head. And, and I think what happened on Facebook, which is the m most positive thing about Facebook, is I put some mentions about what had happened. And then people kept sharing things that happened at Sundance. 
And the film hasn't even come out yet. It's just played at Sundance. Oh, but we're all waiting. Oh, yeah. With great anticipation. People, the, the thing that I took in so big and was because of what you said to me, I remember, is to, to receive. Yes. You said something about receiving once. And it, the, the, the positiveness of people saying, I'm so happy for you. You really deserve it. You've worked so hard. There was such an energy of positiveness out there for me. And I thought, man, I got to focus on this. You bet. You got to receive the love because then you can feel the love more and you love yourself more. And then you have more love to give. Mm -hmm. It's it really is no pun intended, a no brainer. Well, I think I think that's <laughs> why you have played so many moms. Because there's a thing about you, and we're not even that there's far apart. There's this heart thing, I know. I got but this it, heart But thing. it's also that th those of us who didn't have uh, this, your kind of mom. My mom was funny and sexy and, and taught me how to do all the, a lot of other stuff that's really great. But the, the nurturing, the holding the hand, the... the well, the she kind of had to, Jason, because you know my dad was an alcoholic, severe alcoholic, who mm -hmm. ended up committing suicide. Oh, dear. So don't think I don't have a story. Don't think I came we from all an do. idyllic No, no, I know that. You come from a religious at background all. also. We were piss poor, really. And my grandma pretty much raised me. Um, lost my husband, as you know, at 55. But I want to say to everybody out there, you got to quit telling your story. Don't dishonor your story, but you just got to quit telling it and reliving it because otherwise you just keep live in the same story and what happens is also sitting it, at a it, new it, table i share with people as you get older the story is further and further away yeah and that's what that's what i'm doing and i and, and as i as this wonderful thing has happened to me to share with people at home to know that this can happen to you if you show up which is probably yes. so hard my you know i i even get a little because it it's what my dad taught me you know yeah, in you're in making a way, me in, all in a way, in a way, in a way, not through words, but in a way through. I always used to say, "Veritai, go and veritai to the interview and, and be." You sh and I used, and I saw that as seeing your best self, and I heard it through. I was able to hear it through other words, and I hope that the people that are listening to the show today, if you're ever feeling that way, if you're ever feeling, you know, is to get up and show up. Yeah. You know, put how on can I love me enough? To get to out get of the there. house and, and, to get there. and to show up again when everybody tells you that you don't belong. Even if it's just a little tiny toe in the water. Whatever you know, it is. What, what's a little tiny thing I can do today to love me more? Or do something for someone else. Yeah, well, if you can't do something for yourself, For sure show you get up. out of yourself. I feed the homeless on, on, uh, on uh, uh, Thursdays around twice a month because I'm not always able to go on Thursdays because of work. And I go there with my friend Alexander Paul, who people know has been on the show, and she sort of turned me on to it. And I see all these people that every week come, and you see that nobody says, hey, you can maybe move out of this. Just turn left. You know, I always look at them right in the face. I say, hey, how you doing? You know, what's going on? Are you okay? And sometimes they're there, and sometimes they're not. And I always say hello, and I say, and I try to, you know, have I no... I respect you enough to look to listen exactly to just have no ju judgment yeah you know to have no judgment and do that even sometimes i just don't feel like it and i don't like the smell and i don't like there's a million reasons not to go yeah. but i i push myself to go because i think it's important to do something out of myself whether it be that or mentoring kids well because then you get the love back and then you get to feel the love and when you feel the love you get to love yourself more i call it rest give you know, some people think it's giving and receiving, but giving and receiving is like a great hug. It happens at the same moment. You're going to make me crazy. After cr I'm going to take a break and pull myself together. We'll be back in just a moment. I'm absolutely How Jason sweet Stewart. How everybody? Oh, don't. You are watching T Radio V, radio in TV. Grant, I'm Grant Reynolds. Grant Reynolds. Oh. I don't know what to do with my hands. I mean, this is pretty much just like the same thing. Oh, wait, this is. No one wants to see her ninny goats. <sighs> like a bear. He's like a big bear, yeah. is he? Like, yeah. <laughs> Hold on, we'll start.
don't like the right pizza, go f yourself. <laughs> you never know who's shun a shun 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 shun. Absolutely, I Chase. Think that my show is better than yours. Yes, it is. No, it's, no, it's not. not. Yes, it is. No, no it's, it's not. Yes, it is. No, no it's not. The only thing that masks alcohol while you're driving is peanuts. Peanuts? Peanuts? Peanut? Have Peanut. lots of <laughs> when you're drinking. It wouldn't be the first time Langdon had Skippy in his mouth. Is that your dog? He radioed me. <laughs> Throw another log in the fire. It's not hot enough back here. T Radio V, radio and TV. Ay ay ay! I'm Zoe Williams, and I'm Dr. Mark Goulston. I'm Jeff Brown, and we make up the Zoe What Morning Show. You can find us here on tradiov.com every Monday at 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. I make you think. He makes you laugh, and if I get a chance, I'll help you change. Or make you cry with his attempts at humor. Radio in TV. Can you relate? We'll make it happen. Look at Jeff. What you doing? Were you mumbling to yourself? <laughs> he back there mumbling. To them. To them. You are watching T Radio V. Radio in TV. Hey, we're back at Absolutely Jason Stewart with Dee Wallace and her uh, bear that she's, that she's selling on her website, I am Dee Wallace. And the other thing, I really think that this is probably a must give for children to anybody, even adults, but I really think yeah. it, even th some of the, the idea of having this for your kid and they're able, the kid themselves are able to use one paw, they can speak into it. Yeah, the parent or the grandparent, in our infinite wisdom, we didn't think about the kids, but at the toy fair, this buyer brought her little boy up and he said, Oh, I want to put in my own message, and he put in, I used to be afraid to go to sleep at night, but now I'm brave. And he looked up at me with these sparkly eyes, and he says, I'm going to play this every night, Dee, and I'm going to help myself be brave to go to sleep. And I thought... So one paw taught him to be positive, and the other paw taught him to create his own positivity. Yeah. Using his own power yeah. to be more powerful, I thought. So and that's why I created it. And you it. worry about your kids, and, and you want them to be, you know, I see all these parents now they're such i mean the helicopter parents i have one friend and she every every time she i got to take my kid to school I, the kid's 14 she still wants to drive her i was six my mother made me walk on uh, to hancock park elementary yeah. school she was driving her 1962 impala with the blue seats and the plastic on them <laughs> and she, and she said, <laughs> she said she's smoking she's smoking yeah just walk alongside the car i'm going to show you how to go home i can't pick you up anymore i'm having an affair with the butcher <laughs> You know? Well, it was a different world. Oh, my, well, number one, it was much safer. Then. Yeah, it was only six blocks. And they actually could watch where they're going because they weren't on a cell phone. <laughs> oh, they weren't. That's a whole other show. Yes. You know? Well, soon they're going to have cars that won't even, that you'll just sit Do in. you know that our focus level has gone from 12 seconds down to eight? Wow. Yeah. How long we can hold our focus. Some people also in the car, they won't stop texting you. And I know they're driving. And I say, you know, I pull over and say, you're driving. <laughs> oh, well, it's frightening from a creation standpoint, all of us that teach how to create your lives. Because you have to be able to hold your focus on what you want in order to create. And so we're losing the power of being able to hold our focus for any extended time. That's not good. Mm. Especially children. There's a lot of studies coming out. We push our kids too far, too fast. Your brain oh, is God, not yeah. made to read and write at three years old, guys. The brain is not supposed to do that. Your, the young years are s meant to, who am I? Where is my place in the world? How do I socialize with other people? That's what they're supposed to be doing. And we wonder why the suicide rate's going up. Mm. You know, you, you're not even doing well in school these days if you're not in AP classes. I mean, seriously? Really? Are we that afraid of getting behind? And behind so, what? Exactly. So what's our focus on then? And what you're focused on is what you create. So we keep our focus on... I'm afraid I'm not good enough. I'm afraid they're not going to like me. I'm afraid I won't get into the college. And, and that's what you ultimately get. So to use that for the actors at home, because you're also an acting coach, and 
such a prolific actress that people don't know, got close to <laughs> 150 uh, episodics and other 50 films maybe. Yeah, some, oh, over. You know, some, yeah. uh, certainly you're, you're the go-to actress for some of the best horror film directors in the biz and thriller directors. I just wish, uh, I, I, my, my, I can't wait to be in a movie with you one day. And Let's do that. I, would, I, would, I wouldn't kill, but I would kill. Uh, I, I would I would speak to my my uh, my bear and I and I tell myself <laughs> how, how good I am that I could be in a film with Dee Wallace, with front card billing single card. Um, <laughs> okay, I'll share a card. No, you, okay, um, <laughs> we'll share a card. We'll share I a don't card. share a card with you. You can have your own card. Well, I hope so. You claim your own card, baby. I, if that's I, what you I'm want. I'm claiming it. I'm claiming all right. Because it, it doesn't happen if you don't, you know. What do you say to people who are? Because I have a lot of actors that watch my show. Uh, about be bring, who you are. Being the confidence you, into the room. Let me tell you, you you get the part pretty much before you open your mouth, and it's all about what energy do you take into that room and every actor beginning actor or uh, well every actor I think we go in thinking they want something different than who we are and they don't they want you they want what's special about you half the time they've actually said to me my god we had no idea. I mean, until you that did it that yeah, way, we yeah. had no idea that's what it was about. But if I'm sitting back going, what do they want? And, and I want to give them exactly what they want. Let me tell you half the time they don't know. Mm -hmm. They don't know till you walk in and give it to them. Be true to yourself. Go in. Do what you feel is right. And if you keep doing that, if you keep showing up, yeah. you know, that's my then book. you make it. That's you make my, it. That's the title of my book and my show. Showing up. I know. You know. Thanks to your daddy. Yes. Yeah, very much so. And, uh, I, I, you know, we, I look here, we did do a film together. We were in <laughs> Flamingo Road, uh, Flamingo Dreams together. Uh -huh. Was that the, with the guy from uh, Weekend at Bernie's? Uh-huh. Yes, I was cut out of that film. I played a porn director. <laughs> but it, was, it was the beginning of my heterosexual career. Uh, <laughs> so we did work together. But I just, I keep see seeing, and I have this sort of, si uh, we're, we're going on this trip on this show so I'm going to tell the truth I've never talked about this I've had a, I, I, I keep seeing something with you with something n big happening I'm ready yeah I know you are yeah because it's time for another uh, you know I just I did a film in Australia in December called Red Christmas and I took it because it was another Cujo it was every scene highly emotional really a lot of action physical and I thought I'm going to do this just to see if I can do it still. Oh, and I yeah. did all my own stunts. Oh, really? We worked nights, which you know is grueling on your, your body and your emotions. Because it changes your whole clock. And, um, and that's where, because I haven't taught an acting class in, God, I think over 10 years. And but you've coached a lot and of people. I, and I, I, I taught um, a couple of master acting classes down there. Uh, Tom McSweeney, my old buddy who used to cast up here, is down there now. And I forgot how much I loved it, and I forgot, Jason, how good I am at getting a performance and truthfulness out of people. And I thought, I'm going to come back here and do one. Somebody shows up, great. But I'll be there. <laughs> but isn't that, but isn't that the, the, at the same time you forgot that you could do that? Yeah. That's what I mean. I I forgot how good I was at teaching this and stuff. How f you forgot how what a good actress you are. You know. Yeah, sometimes. No, no, but it's true, and I always think that, you know, people forget because it's all about having all the elements. And you've done a lot of great work, but some of the great work isn't it doesn't have all the elements. It wasn't maybe the film didn't get released well. Maybe yeah. the maybe the script wasn't good. Maybe the direction. Maybe you weren't. People don't realize. Maybe you're not. Your 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 performance isn't covered properly. And that can happen in a film. So many things oh. have to come. To, you just have to, again, this is the theme of the show, show up. Oh, yeah. That's you what know? I say and with do Birth, your of, best the, Birth and of a be Nation. Great part. Great director. Yeah. Great story. Well written. You know, the cinematographer is uh, Elliot Davis from Iron Lady. Oh. You know, I mean, who I got to hang out with at oh. Suntance with his lovely wife and beautiful daughter. God, she was gorgeous, her daughter. Just a gorgeous daughter. Everything you know, came together Oh, for my you. God. And, you know... Nate Parker, 
you know, before we, because we have to end, but Nate Parker, I have to say every day in my prayers that this man who wrote, produced, directed, and acting stars in this film and plays, uh, Nat Turner, this was his mission, this is his thing, and, and this was his life dream to put this movie together. And the fact that he pulled me along, man. You, you know, know, and uh, so everybody just hear that, you know, he had to know that it was possible. He had to say, well, I'm going to believe in all possibilities, and I'm going to know that it's possible to make this happen. Seven years. And he did. Seven years. Yeah. And took, it took Spielberg 10 years to get E.T. done. Oh, really? Yep. Crazy. On that note, I'm going to say thank you. Please Aww. go to I am D Wallace if you want to know anything about D. If you forget what her website is, just go to jasonstewart.com and I will send you to. Don't forget to buy a bear for your Papa child bear. or your, your girlfriend or your boyfriend. And uh, if you want to take an acting class, there's a couple of spots left in her class on the 20th. I, I only did a uh, life thing, life uh, session. Life session with yeah. you, but I, I, I can tell, you know, just by knowing you, fabulous coach. And so warm and so wonderful. Thank you for being oh, on the show. Oh, thank you so much. Everyone, take care. I'll talk to you next week. He's absolutely Jason. He's absolutely gay. He'll absolutely brighten up the dark. You are watching T Radio Me. Radio and TV.